Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through everything to do with IGCSE bearings and this is a topic that has been mentioned by a few of you you really want me to go through. So slightly different than some of my other videos I've done I'm going to do a quick introduction here of what a bearing is and give you a couple of examples and then we'll get stuck into those exam questions that you need to be make sure you're ready for whether you're doing the 0580 course or the 0607 course. So let's get started. So first of all, what is a bearing? Now a bearing is essentially a more accurate way of giving directions than using a point on the compass. So and one thing to be aware of is also that bearings give the angle clockwise from north and always have three digits. So these are the things to remember. Angle clockwise from the north line and they have three digits. Now at the moment, that's not gonna to mean too much to you, but we're gonna look at some examples to show you what that bearing looks like. So if we have our normal compass, for example, you can see that the bearing of north, because that's where we always start from, is zero, zero, zero. Remember, we need to have three digits. And if we go due south, go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that that is 180. Imagine you go from north, go clockwise, all the way around until we hit the south part, you can see that this angle on the straight line makes 180 degrees. Actually, the compass, we can represent other angles. So if we go from north to northeast, so let's use a different color. Say I use the purple here. We start at the north line. We go clockwise until we hit, in this case, northeast. And you can see that this angle here is 45 degrees, half a right angle, but that's not a bearing. Remember, a bearing has to be written as 0, 4, 5 degrees. Let's do one more example just so you can get used to this. Let's get a different color out. Let's go with yellow this time. So say we want to go to west. So again, we have to always start from the north line. We always go clockwise like the clock, and we go all the way around until we hit here. So we get this big reflex angle. Well, if this is 90, this is 90, and this is 90, three lots of 90, well, that's equal to 270 degrees. Notice we don't need to put a zero in front of the two because it already has three digits. Now let's look at some quick example questions, really getting used to doing it. Now generally, you're not expected to use a protractor and ruler for bearings questions on the extended paper, but on a core paper you may be asked to actually do this manually. So airport C is 350 kilometers from B. That's really important, this from B, in the understanding of the question, on a bearing of 060 degrees. Okay, so how do we actually work out where airport C is? Well, we're starting from B, that's really important. So we start at B, we have our north line already here drawn for us, and we're going on the bearing of 0, 060 0 degrees. That's of course the same as 60 degrees. So we're gonna go clockwise, we're gonna go this direction, 60 degrees. Now, if we get our protractor, here's a very handy protractor for you, and we put it on the angle, then because we're starting from zero here, we're gonna use the outside scale. We go all the way around until we hit 60 like so. I'm gonna draw a little dot in there. And then we want to measure along this line. Now if one centimeter represents 50 kilometers, then to get 350 kilometers, what do we do to 50 to get to 350? We multiply by seven. So if we do the same to both sides, then seven centimeter represents 350 kilometers. So at this point, we've got our point, so we know exactly where to put our ruler, and then we just measure a seven centimeter line. So this is how you do it manually, and generally not expected to do on the exam. I would also mark in the angle here of 60 degrees. To show the examiner, I've drawn that angle and I've drawn it accurately. Again, this can also work with reflex angles as well. So ship B is 90 kilometers from ship A on the bearing, you know, from ship A is important, on the bearing of 250 degrees. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to do a 250 degree angle going all the way around clockwise. It's gonna give us a big angle. 
So the way we can kind of cheat on this is actually work backwards because we know angles around a point add up to 360 degrees. So if we do 360 minus 250, that's going to give us 110 degrees. So if we go the other direction, anti-clockwise, 110, again, we use the inside scale because we're starting from zero. So we go to this point here. Notice if I draw this line in, okay, which I'm going to do with the ruler, of course, because we want it nine centimeters. So it needs to go all the way along here. Now I know it's nine centimeters because one centimeter represents 10 kilometers and nine centimeters represents 90 kilometers. And what I want to show you here is the bearing and not straightest line in the world, but notice this angle here is what we want. This is 250 degrees because if we take a different color here, this angle here that we measure is 110 degrees and these two numbers add up to 360, which is a full point. So when you get those nasty reflex questions, uh, just be aware that you can actually work backwards and that will help you draw this bearing much more easily. Right, so now I've done a very quick introduction to bearings. Probably the most important part of the video here is to go through some typical IGCSE questions, both valid for 0580 and 0607. Before I start this, as you'll see, there is quite a lot of use of sine and cosine rule and trigonometry in general. So if you want a quick refresher on that, then do check out the video above because I go through those problems without bearings. And now what I'm doing here is integrating bearings into these questions. So question two, Roberta starts from a point A. Uh, here's our point A and walks one kilometer north to a point B then two kilometers east, let's underline this as we go along, two kilometers east to a point C, three kilometers south to a point D, and then finally walks four kilometers west to a point E. And before we're gonna work out the questions here, we're gonna do a nice pictorial display of exactly the information. So point A and walks one kilometer north to a point B. So we start at A, we go due north, so straight upwards, and we get to our point B. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to fill in the information. So that was one kilometer. And then from there, she goes two kilometers east to a point C. So again, not going to be to scale this, but just to give us an idea of what's going on. So this is two kilometers. Okay, so we can tick this off as we go along. Then three kilometers south from there. So we're gonna go one and then we're gonna go further. Let's go down to here. So this is the point D. Key thing here is just take your time. You have plenty of time in both the 0580 and 0607 paper fours. So just take your time as you're going through this. So we've done that. And then finally walks four kilometers west to a point E. So we'll put in the last part here all the way across. Now we had two here already, so we need to go further along, and that's gonna be our point E, with this length here being four kilometers. So just making sure you draw the diagram really, really accurately. Now the question wants us, for three marks, to draw, find the distance AE. So let's pop that in. I'm gonna do this in red. So we want to work out this distance here. And as soon as you see this, the first thing that comes to mind is, could we actually make a triangle? So if I drop a line down here, this would be a right angle because this is due north and this is due west. So we know it's a right angle triangle, that's helpful. And we can work out the missing lengths. So if this is two kilometers and this is four kilometers, then this length here, I'm doing in blue here, is going to be two kilometers. The, distance, the difference between four and two. And this will also be two because the difference between one kilometer and three kilometers, that's also two kilometers here. So let me just mark in that length. At this point, actually, we have a very straightforward Pythagoras problem. Now, the way I tend to teach this now to try and give yourself more time for other questions is write this down in one smooth calculation. So in order to work at AE, this is going to be equal to the square root of 2 squared, comes from this 2, and 2 squared coming 
from this here. So this is enough to get all the method marks. At this point, we just need to go to our calculator and work this out. Right, so I'm going to use my fancy TI Inspire here, but again, any calculator will be fine. So we're doing square root of two. Oh, and make sure when you are using so called fancy calculator that you put the two inside, that's helpful, plus two squared. And then we get the answer of 2.83 to three significant figures. So we go back. And I generally always write down a couple of decimal places afterwards and then show my rounding. And this is to 3SF. Notice they generally give you your units for these kind of questions. So you don't need to worry about putting kilometers afterwards. Our next question, and this is where the bearings come in. So you're wondering where the bearings is. Here it is. So find the bearing of E from A. Now again, the key thing here is from A. That's very, very important. So we've got A. So this is A here. Now B is essentially our north line here anyway. And we want to go clockwise until we hit the line AE. So I'm going to go around all the way around, round, 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 until we hit that line. And then we stop. Now, at the, on the surface, this actually looks quite difficult to do, but we can separate this out into two questions. First of all, let's take the straight line part. This angle here, like we saw on the very first slide, is equal to 180 degrees. So this angle here. So all we really need to do here, essentially, is work out this angle here. And then we can consider what kind of triangle that we have. Notice this is two kilometers and this is two kilometers as well. So we have an isosceles triangle, which means that this black angle and this black angle must be the same. We know this is 90. So these two angles must add up to 90. They're both the same. Therefore, each angle is 45. Now, we could have used trigonometry to work that out as well. But again, if you have the opportunity, try and save your time in the exam. Now, that's not the answer to the question because we want the entire angle here. So to show my working, I'm going to go bearing is equal to 180 plus 45. Again, you can use a calculator for this. And that gives you 225 degrees. Notice that is the correct answer because it already has three digits. So that's 225 degrees. And the last part of the question, again, not really relevant for bearings, but let's just finish it off, is work out the area of the entire shape, A, B, C, D, E. Well, the first thing to do is work out the area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is equal to three times two, so length times width which is six, and then the area of the triangle, that's half base times height, so two times two divided by two, lots of two, is equal to two. So the air, total area, I'll quickly write my working here is, the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle, so that's just six plus two, Nice question to work out, which is just equal to eight square kilometers. Okay, so you can check the answer scheme there. Question B is the really important part here, just getting used to working with bearings and knowing what they're asking for you to do. Okay, on to a more difficult question, but they do give us a lot of information to start with. So a ship sails on the following course, 60 kilometers, on a bearing of 0, 025 degrees from A to B. Now notice they give us the angle here, but they don't write in the side. So I'm gonna write in, this is 60 kilometers for this side here. And then it goes 80 kilometers on a bearing of 115 degrees from B to C. So that's that angle and this side here. So this is 80 kilometers. And then finally, 75 kilometers on a bearing 195 from, uh, from C to D which is here. So I'm going to write in this as 75 kilometers. So if you don't have a all the information on your diagram, then make sure you do put it in there because it could be helpful later on. Now, the first question for one mark is show the angle ABC. So this entire angle here is a right angle. Now, the way we're going to do this is use angles in parallel lines. Notice our north line here and our north line here are parallel. 
that means going in the same direction. Which means using Z angles, good old Z angles, long time since we use this, notice there's like a Z going on here. That means that this angle here, 25, must be the same as this angle, which is also 25 degrees. Notice that angles on a straight line, because this is a straight line, the north line, add up to 180. So to work out this angle here, we do 180 minus 115. That gives us 65 degrees. You probably see the answer here. So angle ABC is equal to 65 plus 25, which is equal to 90 degrees. So that allows us to know here that this is a 90 degree angle. I'm going to rub this out because we need that later on. i just put myself a right angle in here. So we can do the next part of the question. Like so. And for part B, we need to calculate angle BCA. So let's find out what angle that is first of all. BCA, that's going to be this angle here. Now notice we've actually got a right angle triangle here. This is why these kind of questions, they do follow through. And if I just draw out this triangle separately, it'd probably be easier to visualize what we're going to do. So if I draw this triangle, essentially what we have here is a right angle triangle. This is 60, this is 80, and we're looking for this particular angle here, which we'll just call X for the moment. This is going to involve using trigonometry. Again, check that video out I mentioned earlier if you want to go through some practice of this. So because we've got the adjacent side and the opposite side, we're going to use tan. Yeah, I tend to use these formerly triangles. Sokotoa. There's lots of different ways of thinking about this. So the tan of x, tan the angle, is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 60 over 80. And so to get x on its own, the opposite of tanning is inverse tan. So tan minus 1, as some people would like to call it. Always hurts. <laughs> and that gives us then x is equal to tan inverse 60 over 80. So let's pop that into calculator and work it out. So first thing to do is check your calculators in degrees, otherwise bad things will definitely happen. So we're going to use tan inverse. Uh, on this calculator, it's quite easy, just click tan inverse. And then we do 60 divided by 80. Don't even have to close the brackets, does it automatically. And we get 36.869, which I'm going to write down. So 36.869. Eight, six, nine, dot, dot, dot. And if you round that to three significant figures, as always, we get then 36.9 degrees. Make sure you put the degrees in there as well. Don't want to lose the mark. Now, calculating the distance AC is actually easier than it seems. So it's this here. So if we go to our triangle here, this is actually using Pythagoras that we've seen before. So let's just call this Y. So we can use Pythagoras because we have a right angle triangle and two sides. So we can just go and write this in one smooth calculation. AC is equal to the square root of 60 squared plus 80 squared. Now I could use a calculator for this, but it's one of these very smart Pythagorean triples. So this actually just gives you straight away just 100. So we can pop in 100 kilometers as our final answer. The beauty of not using trig here and just using Pythagoras, you get the answer straight away at 100 kilometers. And on to the last two parts, which are a bit trickier. As you can see, both here are chunky four mark questions. The first thing we need to do is calculate the distance AD. So let's go back to our diagram and let's mark in some of the information. So we now know this is 100 kilometers and we know this is 36. 0.869. I tend to use the unrounded because you might need it later on. And we need to find AD. So this length here, let's just call this Z for the time being. Okay, so my temptation here is to work out this angle. If we can work out this angle, then we can use the cosine rule because we have side side angle looking for the side opposite. And we can actually work out this angle fairly straightforwardly. 
because we have what's called a C angle. Let's put that in color. So like so. And C angles are slightly different to alternate angles. It means that these two angles add up to 180. And that means then that this must be 65 degrees. And then we know angles around a point add up to 360. So I'm going to use the calculator here to work out the most accurate answer possible for this. Um, and you'll see exactly what I'm going to do on the calculator. So we're going to use this answer. So we're going to go 360 minus answers. This is control and the minus button here. And minus, let's go back, minus 195 and minus 65. Oh, you see me. There we are. <laughs> uh, minus 195 minus 65 and then that gives us the most accurate answer here of 63.13 so let's pop that in 63.13 dot 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 degrees and now we've got everything that we need here to actually use the cosine rule now what is the cosine rule it's just to remind you here it's on your formula sheet so c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c and which one's which here well we can just label this up very carefully use green here so this would be our c the side we're looking for a and b would be the sides that we already know and this would be so called big c the angle so if we substitute this into our formula get the red pen and remember the c on its own would just be the square root of it so you get c squared is equal to 100 squared plus 75 squared. Let's just check up the right numbers. Yep. Minus 2 times 100 times 75 times cos of this angle in between. So that's 63.13 dot 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 degrees. Again, I'm not going to rush my calculator. I'm going to square root. Now, a way I can say this quickly is using an ellipse. So square root of everything above. So let's now go to my calculator and then work this out. So first of all, let's start with a square root. 100 squared plus 75 squared minus brackets. It's all about just being very careful here. 2 times 100 times 75 times cosine of this angle here, the 63.13. Now I can be a bit lazy here and just go control and this button, pop in all my brackets. And notice this is what you want to do. Get as far as you can with the algebra and then just use your calculator once. You'll avoid then some of these rounding errors. And if you press the big button, then we get our final answer here. The most accurate answer of 94.05. Let's pop that in. So 94.05 dot dot dot, and that's only equal to 94.1 kilometers for all four marks. Okay, and it gets even trickier at this part. So now we need to work out the bearing of D from A. That's really important. I always underline this when I do this kind of question. So we go back from A, and I want to get to D. So we start at A. And we go clockwise all the way around until we hit the line AD. So start at A, go clockwise until we hit AD. So what we're looking for essentially here is this big angle here, this green angle. Now, the way I do this is separate this into different parts. So notice you've got 25 already for this part. What we'll need to do is work out two separate angles here. This one will be easy enough to work out, this yellow angle here. And then the, probably the trickiest one to work out will be this angle here. And we'll add all those answers together at the end. Now let's start with the yellow angle, because that's probably the easiest to work with here. Now notice we've got the other two angles in the triangle. So angles in a triangle add up to 180. So essentially what we need to do here is do 180 minus the other two angles, so 90 plus 36.869 dot dot dot. And that will give us that angle there. So let's go back to the calculator and work that out. Right, so remember from before, if I go to trig and tan inverse and do 
60 divided by 80 or 6 divided by 8. That gave us this 36.86 angle. So we just now need to do 180 minus open brackets 90 plus answer. Close brackets and that gives us 53.13. So let's write that in. So this angle here is 53.13 dot 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 degrees. So that's the easier angle to work out. Now we want to work out the angle down below. And notice there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. I'd recommend using the sine rule here because we have side angle we're looking for. Let's call this, um, let's use a different letter. Let's call this F. And then we have this side now from the calculation we did previously and this angle. So this is set up very nicely as a sine rule question. So to remind what the sine rule looks like, for an angle we're going to do sine A over A equals sine B over B. And just need to label this really carefully. So F is going to be, let's do this in green, going to be our big A. This will now be our small A. And then this will be our small B. And this will now be our big B. So we're going to pop all that in. And so we've got 94.1. So we're going to have sine of F over the side opposite, which is 75, is equal to sine of the angle, so the 63.13 dot 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 over the answer from before, so 94.05. The dot 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 just reminds me, just make sure I put plenty of decimal places when I finally work this out. Now, the way I tend to do this is get that F on its own. So what's the opposite of dividing by 75? Well, we're going to times by 75 on both sides. If we do that, this cancels. Then we get sine F. Ooh, that's weird. <laughs> equals 75 sine 63.13 dot 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 over 94.05 dot dot dot. Before I reach the calculator, I want to work at f on its own. So what's the opposite of signing or well, inverse signing on both sides? This cancels. Then we get f is equal to sine inverse. And then we put dot, dot, dot for this horrible fraction. So right, let's go to the calculator and make sure we make this as accurate as possible. Before we go to side inverse, do weird things. There we are. Okay, let's go control and set up our fraction. So we have 70, 75, and then sine, right, and this is the 63.13. So I'm gonna write in about four decimal places here, 63.1301. Keep a sort of float of about four decimal places. And at the bottom, I'm going to put in 94.0505, just so I can try and keep this as accurate as possible. Press the enter button, we get 45.3446, which I'm going to write down. Okay, and now I've got all these angles. So I've got 25, 53.13, and 45.3446. I'm now going to add all those together. So I'm going to take my answer from before, add it to 53. Point, there we answer plus, and you just be really careful with this. So 53.1301. And then plus the 25. And that will give us our full bearing. Okay, and I'm getting to the answer of 123.47. So 123.5. Dot, dot, dot. Again, we can round this actually to three significant figures. That's generally normal. So... 
123 degrees. Remember, this is an angle, so uh, it's a bearing, so we do need to put the degrees as well. Right, so you can check the mark scheme, so you can see where you're picking up all the marks. Again, the good hefty paper four question where this is very normal. IGCSE bearings are generally integrated into the question, and we've got here all 30 marks. Okay, and on to question 11. So if you're liking the content so far, then please do give the video a like. It really does help the channel grow, and yeah, shares this video with more of you out there. Okay, let's continue. So question 11a, we've got diagram showing two fields on horizontal ground. A is due south of D, so this line is going straight upwards. This is really important for the bearings part of the question later on. And C is due east of D, therefore making this a right angle. And we're going to do some trigonometry to start with here. So calculate DC. So notice here we've actually got a right angle triangle. What I tend to do here is actually draw this out separately. So imagine you're taking DCB here and drawing this out as a separate triangle. So let's label this up. So we have a right angle down the bottom here. This is 30 degrees and we also have 102 meters. As soon as we see at right angle triangle, you know it's time for Sokatoa. So in order to use Sokatoa, first of all, I'm gonna label my sides. So the uh, angle here is 30 degrees. This 102 is next to the angle, therefore the adjacent. Okay, then this side BC is opposite the angle. So we label this as O. And then finally we have DC, which is what we're looking for, is the hypotenuse. And notice in this particular situation, we know the adjacent side, so that's 102 meters. We're looking for the hypotenuse, so DC. So if we think about our Sokatoa, so so S O H C A H and T O A, we have a look at which letters we have, A and H, so we're going to be using CA, so COS. Now I tend to do this using formula triangles. Again, other teachers may do this slightly differently. So I write this in. So we've got the H at the bottom, A at the top. We're looking for the hypotenuse, so I cross that out. And this shows me what calculation to do. So we've got the adjacent, which is 102. And we're going to divide by the cosine of the angle, which is the cosine of 30. So let's go to my calculator and work it out. So we're going to type in here, let's get that fraction button working. So 102 here divided, make sure it is in degrees. Notice I did check this. So we're going to press on cos and it's going to do something weird. Not anymore. And there we go. There's our cos 30. And we get our final answer here of 117.77, which I'm going to pop across here. 17.77. Again, we generally expect it to round to three significant figures. So this then is 118, which I am going to pop in. And now we've got a good follow-up question to this, very typical on these paper four style questions. Calculate AB. Now notice here, we haven't got a right angle triangle anymore. So no Sokotoa, but we do have the sine and cosine rule that we know about. However, this is one of those very special situations where we have two sides, we have the angle in between, and we're looking for that third side here. So this is going to call for the cosine rule. Now, the cosine rule, to remind you from the formula sheet, is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So Pythagoras, basically. Um, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. And this is, of course, on your formula sheet. What we're going to do now is label those sides. So let's use a different color here. So the side we're looking for is going to be the C, the small C. The angle is going to be big C opposite. And the other sides doesn't really matter here, but small A and small B. And the way I tend to teach students to do this is to really save your time in the exam. I'm going to write this in one smooth calculation to get all those method marks. So notice that C on its own is just the square root of everything I wrote down here. So we can actually work out C directly which is the square root of a squared, which 110 squared plus 102 squared minus two times 110 times 102. We need a longer square root here, times the cosine of the angle in between, 
which is 60. So now I've got that pure calculation there, I can just go straight to my calculator. Okay, so I've got this set up, let's get that square root ready and let's pop it in. So I've got 110 squared, just being careful how we write this in. So 102 squared minus open brackets, two times 110 times 102 times, and we want cosine here, the cosine of 60. Make sure it's in degrees, that's a double check. We press our enter button and then we get our final answer of 106.226. So we're going to pop that in. Okay, so we get 106.226. Again, I generally round this to three significant figures. So that's going to be equal to 106. But we are going to be using that a little bit later on. So let me just write in some of these values. So we've got 106. Point two, and we've got 118 for this. I'm not sure that's going to be helpful at some point. And now we need to work out the total area of the fields. And the way I tend to do this is split this into two questions. Now, the first thing is working out the triangle here. Let's call that triangle A and then triangle B. Now, triangle A, we don't quite have all the information we need in order to use. Uh, half base times height, we'd need to work out this side. However, we can just use the general formula for the area of a triangle, which is something you need to know, a half A, B, sine C. And notice we've actually got all the sides required here to actually do that calculation. So we can actually do here, and we've got 117.77. So I'm going to use the unrounded version here. So we go a half times 117.77 times 102 times sine 30. That's going to be the triangle A. And then B can be done in a very similar way. So we'd use a half times 102 times 110, the side surrounding this triangle, and then the angle in between. So sine 60. And again, I really try and want to do this in one very smooth calculation. So let's go and do it. Okay, so let's get the brackets open. So 0 0.5 half AB sine C. So we'll start first of all with the 117.77. So 117.77 times 102 times sine 30. This is all about being precise here. Close brackets twice. And now we're going to add the second triangle. So 0 0.5 times and we've got here 102 and 110 so 102 times 110 times the sine make sure we're using sine here 60 close all those brackets press the enter button and then we get our final answer of 7861.5 7,861.5. Again, always round to three significant figures. Can't stress that enough. And if we do that, so we're rounding at this point, we get 7,860. That's really, really important. And we'll pop that in over here. Now, at the moment, we're probably thinking, where are the bearings in this question? This is a bearings video. Well, here it is. We need to work out the bearing of A from B, and this actually happens to be the AA star element of this question. Now, in order to do this, we actually need a side here. We need the 106.2 to be able to do this. And the key thing is to be able to recognize the bearing you're looking for. So the bearing of A from B, so we're starting at B. This is very important. Again, to do a bearing, we need that north line in. And then we want to go clockwise until we hit that line AB. So we're actually looking for this angle here, this big reflex angle. Now the approach I would take here is actually kind of working backwards. So if we can work out this angle, which is actually easier than it looks, and this more difficult angle here, then we know angles around a point make 360, and therefore we can work out that red angle there. Now, I said this angle up here was an easy one to work out, and it all goes back to something I said right at the start of the question, which is A is due south of D. This is a vertical line. Now, why this is important? Well, once I start drawing this in, you're probably going to see 
the relationship I'm looking for here. Notice the 60 degrees forms a Z angle with this angle here. So don't forget those key angle facts, alternate angles, corresponding angles. So we actually know this is equal to 60. So that saves us a ton of time. All we need to do is now work out this angle here. Now, the way we do this is that we have angle we want and the side opposite, and we have angle side. This calls for the sine rule. So if we do then sine B, so this angle here, divided by 110, that's equal to then sine 60, divided by this uh, side that we worked out earlier, so 106.2. Now we do need to do a little bit of rearranging here to work out the angle. Again, the dividing by 110 is annoying, so what's the opposite? Well, that's times by 110 on both sides. This cancels, that leaves us then with sine B is equal to 110 sine 60 over 106.2. And again, we want that smooth calculation we can put into the calculator. So what's the opposite of signing something? Well, doing the inverse sign, so-called sine minus one, which hurts every time. <laughs> so we get B is equal to sine inverse of 110 sine 60 over 106.2. So let's reach for that calculator and work it out. Okay, so we are going to do trig of that sine inverse function. We want a fraction here and we want 100 and, oh, we want the 110 inside our fraction. That's important. So we get 110 sine 60 over 106.2. Again, you could take more decimals here to make it a bit more reliable. That gives us 63.768, so let's pop that over. So that means V is equal to 63.768, dot, dot, dot. So let's pop that in for our angle. We'll be using the unrounded version for this question. Always double check these things. And then to work out the bearing, so bearing, the right bearing, is again that plan, so we do 360 minus the two angles we've just worked out here, so the 60 and the 63.768 dot dot dot. Again, just going to rely on my calculator to do the rest. So we have 360, just be careful here, make sure everything's precise. 60 plus, and I can just take the answer from before, so that takes the answer just up here. If we do this, press the enter button, we get our final answer of 236.23, which I'm going to write in in full. The examiner knows what I've been doing. And remember, a bearing has to have three digits, but we have three digits here, so 236 degrees. Notice I've done this quite differently to the mark scheme. So do notice that. They've taken a completely different approach, but that's absolutely fine. This is, again, for an AA star question, that's very, very typical that you may want to take a slightly different method to get to that same answer. Interestingly, I've also got the examiner's report here for you. So notice this was a question that got a wide range of marks. So this is a really good way of showing you're a B candidate, an A candidate, an A star candidate by getting those C and D parts correct. So I'll let you have a read of this so you can see where those typical mistakes are made. Probably the most important part here is actually part D the bearings part, and notice you should be using this video to revise because this is traditionally a real challenge for students to do bearings questions. So if you can do those better than other students out there, you're more likely to get those higher grades. Notice they took a completely different approach to how I did, but it's absolutely fine. I think my way makes logical sense be using the idea of Z angles, but if you've taken the approach seen in front of you, that is fine. Okay, and on to question seven. So we've got another field here, given with a path from A to C labeled in as 150 meters. Notice all the other information here is already on our diagram, including the bearing here, given from B from A is 70 degrees. And the first part is very typical. So using that right angle triangle to then work out a missing side or a missing angle. And we want to find AB here. 
So what I tend to do here is actually draw myself a right angle triangle. So imagine I've rotated this around, that's really important. So B is going to form my right angle. Now imagine this in your mind as you're turning it, so you can see then this is going to be your 55 degrees, like so. So that's going to be A. Then we've got a hypotenuse of 150 meters and then this will then be C. And as soon as you draw it like this, with a little bit of scribble, apologies for that, then we can use Sokotoa. And the way we do that is we label our sides. So we've got the hypotenuse, we're looking for AB, which is our adjacent side, so next to the angle. And again, the opposite is not what we're gonna use here. And in fact, this is actually quite helpful because we want to find the adjacent, we have the hypotenuse, Therefore, we want to use cosine. Remember, in the previous question, let me go back very quickly. With the formula triangles, it's exactly the same idea, A and H, so that's why we're using cosine. And it's building on the skills that you've looked at so far. So if we use our formula triangle of cosine, so cos theta times H A. Now this time, we're actually looking for the adjacent. So let's cross it out. So that gives us the calculation we need to do here. So we need to work out, let's go back to red. So cosine of the angle, which is cosine of 55 times 150. And this is where the calculator comes in handy. Okay, so let's just type in. So cos 55, always a relaxing question to start with on these paper fours. So 150, press the enter button, and then we get our precise answer of 86.0. Again, I always write a couple of decimal places here. So 0 0.03 to show the examiner I've done it. And then we round to three significant figures. That is 86.0 meters. So that's the standard part of the question done. Now we're gonna move on to the bearings. Again, this is why you're watching this video, seeing where the bearings do appear. And this place we need to work out the bearing of D from A. Very important we read the question. So D from A, so we start at A from the north line, and then we go round, 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 until we hit the line DA or AD. So notice we're looking for, again, for this reflex angle here. Now this is an easier question in some ways because we've already got two of the angles, so all we actually need to work out here, and let me do this in a different color, is work out for this angle in blue. Now notice we've actually got a triangle here, so 120, and then we've got the 150, and then the 235. And what I've always taught, again, both IGCSE courses, is when you've got three sides and you're looking for an angle, you use the angle version of the cosine rule, which unfortunately on 0607 is not on your formula sheet. So this is something you need to learn directly. So let me just give this to you. So cosine C equals A squared plus b squared minus c squared and over 2ab. And yeah, I suggest whichever IGCC of course you're doing, 0580 or 0607, it's just good to learn some of these facts, whether it's given or not. So please do learn this, it will make your life easier. Because notice what I'm gonna do now, it's gonna label the angle as big C, the side opposite as small c, the others are a and b. And I can just put it into the formula now. So cos c, is equal to a squared plus b squared, so 120 squared plus 150 squared minus 235 squared, all over two times 120 times 150. And because we want to find the angle, we need to do the opposite of cos, which is inverse cos, cosine, on both sides. And to shorten my working slightly, I'm gonna write cosine, inverse cosine, dot, 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 represent the calculation above. And now let's go to the calculator. And as you know, we're gonna pop it in. Okay, so first of all, let's get that inverse cosine function going and a fraction. And here we go. So 120 squared plus 150 squared. It's important to improve your fluency with using the calculator. So you can use it at speed and do it accurately. That's very important. If we pop it in here and then press the big button at the end. We then get our angle of 120.59. And 
And in order to work out the bearing, I'm just going to write that in very quickly though. So 120. 0.59 just for the examiner and so to work out the bearing we need to add everything together so the 120 0.59 dot 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 plus 55 plus 70 and again this way of doing this is just doing 70 plus 55 plus answer and then we get our final answer of 245.59 so to write that down 245 Again, we want to round to three significant figures. A bearing always has to have three figures. And in this case, it'll be 246 degrees, like so. Okay, so you can see the mark scheme there in front of you. So you can check through exactly the uh, process I did. I didn't do part 7C because I don't think it really fitted into the bearings part of this particular video. So make sure you're happy with bearings, hopefully, after this about 50 minutes, uh, one hour tutorial, you're much happier with how bearings work. And now you have bearings, a good understanding of it, the best thing to do now is check out the video right in front of you, because now I go through general trigonometry questions, which really build on your knowledge of bearings as well.